Hi everyone, this is Cricket Song with Lunar Wisdom, and today this video is going to be talking about or discussing tarot spreads, specifically the Celtic Cross. It is through YouTube and other social media channels that allows me to offer my support to other pagans such as yourself within our community. If you would like to be a part of that community, you can support me, Cricket Song, and Lunar Wisdom by clicking the link to my Patreon page and read more about the benefits and rewards that you'll receive by pledging your support. I've been asked for many of, from many of my viewers, subscribers, to do more videos about divination. And some of that does include tarot, or cards in general. But because I specifically read a lot of tarot, uh, people have asked me to share with them spreads and interpretations of the spreads, which I used to do a long time ago, but I think a lot of those videos have gotten deleted because they were so old. So what I'm going to do, starting with this video, is to go through some of the most commonly used tarot spreads that I use with my clients, talk to you about the layout of the cards, how I interpret the layout, and then show you any modifications that I may do to the spread, which is why we're beginning with the traditional Celtic cross. It's, it's pretty popular. I used it. I have m since modified it and use my version of the Celtic cross spread, which I will show you as well. So I'm going to begin, I'm going to be using the Rider weight, but then I'm going to show you the same spreads using the cards I'm using now, which is the Green Witch Tarot, to show you how the interpretation of the spread can change when you use different cards or different um, different types of tarot. Okay, so the traditional Celtic cross spread begins with the first card being laid out, and this is the querent, or the person that you're doing the reading for, whether this is you or someone else. And I'm sorry about the glare. Uh, this is the two of swords that's being placed down. Now the second card, which you lay like this is the obstacle or the blockage. So this is what's stopping them, okay? Now, some tarot readers, when they're placing that first querent card, they may go through their deck and choose a card specifically to represent the person that they are reading. I don't do that. I allow the deck to pick out the card. So I just take the very first card on the top and that becomes the querent card. But if you feel called to look through your deck and pick a specific card that represents your querent, then I encourage you to do so. So then that second card is the blockage or the obstacle. The, the third card you place up here and that is the conscious goal. That is what the person is trying to accomplish. They know what it is and they're trying to accomplish it. The next card is the unknown influence, meaning that this is something that is influencing them reaching that conscious goal, but they're unable to get it because of this influence. It's an unknown. Now, actually, this could be a positive unknown influence as well, but it is something that they're not aware of. The next card represents the past. The next card you place represents the future. And then you're going to have four cards here. Your querence attitude, other people's perception, your querence hopes and fears. And then the last card is the outcome. So this is what the spread would look like. Okay. I am just going to scooch these over a little bit so that we can get them in the frame. Okay. So the first thing I want to talk about here is Things 
space for you to remember as you're laying the cards down. This, the first card is always your querent. This is their obstacle, so it blocks them. So as the card cuts over the, the querent, you know that that's their obstacle. That's what's stopping them. This card is their conscious goal. And what I think of is if, if this is my querent, this is what they're thinking about. So it's in their head. So it's sort of like above them. These are sort of just tips to remember what the placement, instead of having a piece of paper written down, um, it's so you can remember what the placement is. This is unknown influences. So this I kind of look at as if this is my querent and this is their head, then this is sort of their feet. It's what's, what they are stepping on, their foundation, and they may not look down to see what is unknown influencing them. It's just a kind of a, a practical way for me to remember, okay, this is the conscious goal and the unknown influence in their head they are conscious of it, what they're stepping on, they may not be conscious of. The past, because it's behind them, the future, this is what's ahead of them. So these cards, these first six cards, were pretty easy for me to remember the placement. It's when we get to this side that really confused me when I was trying to remember the placement. So again, this is their attitude. This is other people's perception of them or the situation. This is their hopes and fears, and this is their outcome. So these two cards were easy for me to remember because the outcome is always the last card, and the hopes and fears kind of lead to the outcome. But these two cards, I just had to try to remember the best I could as to what they represent because I had no trick to help me remember. So it was the attitude and other people's perception of either the situation or my querent. So that's the layout, and that's how what they represent in their placement. So then when you are reading or interpreting the cards, the first thing, because I am in an, oops, I just hit the camera with my hand. I apologize that I'm not going to read. Okay. So, oops. so the first thing, um, when I'm looking at the cards, because I'm an intuitive reader and I rely on you know, my understanding of what is being presented to me is I look at the picture. I look at the picture within the picture was how it was explained to me by the lady who mentored me. Look and find the picture within the picture. So then I look and I look at how each card relates to the others. So I'm looking at the image and the first thing I, I take note of is any people in the card because a lot of the cards have people and I look at how one person would relate to another person within the card and the easiest ones for me to to notice are the court cards now this because the first card I'm gonna move the obstacle out of the way for a minute the first card is my querent the future card is the Knight of Cups. And when we look at this, can you see? Yeah, you can see it pretty good. The Knight of Cups is moving away from my querent. I would interpret this very differently than if the card was set like this. So I'm going to move you closer so that you can see what I'm talking about. So what I'm saying is I would interpret the original position was the Knight of Cups was upright. And if my querent is the Two of Swords, the Knight of Cups seems to be, has his back towards my querent. And he seems to be riding this way. This is the future card. So it seems like in the future, he's moving away from my querent. I would interpret this very differently if the Knight of Cups was reversed because then this is telling me that the Knight of Cups in the future is riding towards my querent, which gives me a very different interpretation. 
The same with the magician. I'm going to move the camera so you can see this. Okay, so the magician in this position is, when I'm looking at his hands raised up, he's sort of pointing down to my querent. And this is the, uh, the conscious goal. Now, depending on how you read the magician, personally, I read him as the magician, the ability to manifest what we're thinking about to our reality, as above, so below. So he is taking what he has presented or idea, an idea in the astral, something he's manifested in the astral with his thoughts, and he's bringing it down to manifest it in reality. And because this is pointing towards my querent, this would tell me that the magician is being successful, that my querent, whatever this conscious goal is that they have, they are going to be able to manifest it into the reality. Because not only that, they have every single tool that they need. They have the pentacle, the chalice, the sword, and the wand. They have all their tools available to manifest it. Again, if this card was this way, was in the reversed position, I would read it in a very different way. That the idea is not able to manifest. That they are trying to take something in reality and make it a truth and there is a lot to work against and usually that's that's impossible to do then I look at the cup which is sitting on the table it's upside down the cup can't hold anything when you have your cup upside down on the table you're not allowing anything to go into the cup and if you flip a cup upside down all the liquid that's held in the cup will be empty and depending on how you interpret cups what that represents for you, it would mean that that cup cannot hold whatever it is that you want because it's upside down. So I would interpret this very different because of the relationship of the image to my querent. So then when we're looking, let's put the, the, the cards the original way. These were flipped up. So let's look at the obstacle when we're looking at the obstacle. Now the obstacle in the position, the obstacle is what stops the querent from moving forward. The obstacle is what came from the past and is bridged into the future. And that's sort of like a gate. It, to me, it looks like a gate is shut on my querent. That whatever it is that my querent wants to do is being blocked and is connecting the past to the future. So then you look at what this is. And again, depending on if it's this way or this way, because it doesn't have a, a reversed, this, I, I sort of view this as taking something from the past and bringing it to the future, carrying sort of baggage with you. If it's this way, I feel, and this is, again, this is all just my own interpretation, that it's taking a possibility in the future and sort of not uh, being understanding that there's something I want in the future, but not allowing it to happen because of what I had in my past. So it's almost like trying to revert back to the future, that if I see the card in this way, it tells me that this person knows that they're able to get what they want in the future, but for some reason they're self-sabotaging that and they're trying to live in the past, where this one is, they can't even see the future because all they focus in is the past. I hope that makes sense. So then I look at the image, and obviously there's two people here. So something about their past in some sort of relationship, whether it's romantic or not, but there's something from their past that they're trying to carry into the future. 
So, you know, then I look at the past and I see that this is reversed. Again, all the cups are going, anything that's in this, these cups is going to spill out because when you hold a cup upside down, you just dump it out, would be very different if it was upright. So even though I don't necessarily read reversed cards, I still use the meaning or the image as reading it as reversed. You know, when the cup is upright, it can hold things. When the cup is upside down, it doesn't have the ability to hold things. So then with the, th with the card that, that is then found in the foundation or in the bottom, in the unknown influence, again, I look at the relationship of the card and how it has affects what else is going on here. And the first thing I would notice is that there are two people in this card and there are two people in the obstacle. So this is telling me that there is some sort of relationship between the two people here in the lover's card and the two people in the two of cups card. And I would take that into consideration, especially because this card is talking about taking something from the past and trying to manifest it in the future. And it has some sort of connection to that unknown influence. So maybe my querent isn't even aware that they're bringing their baggage from their past and trying to manifest it in the future. And it's an unknown influence, whatever this card represents. The other thing that I would take note of is that with the obstacle, it's the two of cups, my querent is the two of swords, and then we have two people showing in the unknown influence. The three of these, with the representation of the number two, whether it's the actual number or the image, because again, we see that there's only one person in the two of swords. It may be a two, but there's only one person, but there is the number two, and the person is holding two swords, would be a reference to that's just one person, my querent. Are they one of the two people in this card and this card? Or are these two different people? And then you want to look at the body language. I mean, the body language in the Two of Swords, she's very closed off. I mean, if you know anything about people in body language, I mean, when you're standing and talking to someone with their arms crossed, they're definitely not open to listening to you. And not only that, look at that, she's got a blindfold on too. So she is closed while these two people are trying to be very open with each other. He's even ex extending their hand to this person. Then the other relationship you want to look at is the fact that the, this person, uh, and a, it's, it's a representation of a man, is extending a hand towards the woman, but in this one, he's riding away, and they're cups. So that's another thing I would look at. The, relations, the relationship of the suits, depending on how you read them, we have cups, cups, cups. So there's, and this acts as the bridge right? Cups, cups, cups. So that's how I would look at these. Then when we move over to what we got going on over here, I look at, which is why the layman, the placement of the cards is important, because let's look at how, where the, this um, Knight of Chalices is driving his horse into. So he is moving forward, and then I look at the relationship between him and these two cards. And if you remember, the eight is others' perception of either my querent or the situation, and the nine is my querent's hopes and fears about the situation. So if this future is moving towards the hopes and fears and others' perception, then what does that mean? What would that mean? that this person, if I'm, I'm saying that this person is leaving my querent's life in the future, he or she is moving towards my hopes and fears and others' perception. So how does that influence it? How would that influence me? And I look at what's in the, in the image to try to get an idea. Another thing I would take note of is that this is a cup and these are cups. 
again the upside down cups not only does it actually in the upright image show you that the cups are spilled but even the cups that are upright in this position are being are upside down and in this one we see the pentacles depending on what you believe the pentacle to represent with the point downward would mean one thing as opposed to the point being upward and then the image of how the uh, pentacles are shaped or where they're placed I know from study that this is the Kabbalah tree of life and what does that mean what's the symbolism in that and if it were upside down what does that mean I would want to take note of that but even if you're not aware of that not even aware that the pentacles are are set up as the Kabbalah tree of life what does the set of of pentacles how they are positioned what would that mean for you and then looking at the bottom card here how these swords are pointing that way if it's reversed and pointing this way if they're upright I mean, is this ascending something since the person is below? Would they be able to climb these like a ladder? Whereas if it's upside down, is the person falling down the ladder? I mean, depend, are they falling out of bed because it's upside down? Or are they, you know, just waking up? Finding that relationship and what it means to you. And this being the attitude of the individual. So what does that mean, the position of the person to the ladder in the picture? That's how I look at this traditional setup when I'm trying to get a picture of what's going on. So before I move to the modified one, how I've taken this and modified it, I want to show you what this would look like and how when you're using a different deck from the traditional Rider weight because I, I don't really read with this deck anymore. It's more of a teaching tool for me. When I'm doing it, I want to show you the differences and how they look. So I'm going to set it up and I'll be right back. Okay. <clears throat> so what I did is I placed the cards underneath so we can do like a slow reveal to show you. So let me move the camera up so we can see the first the first few cards here without a big layer here okay so the first card was the querent so the difference here is this is the querent the two of swords in, in the rider weight this is the two of swords in the green witch tarot and there is because the colors is a little difficult to see so different very different here we have one person where we have two people right um a different image altogether where you may get a different feel i mean the two of athame she's very closed off here but the body language here between the two people seems as if they might be able to work out their differences right although he has a big huge sickle <laughs> it's a little different so in relation to the next card which was the two of cups here we have the two of cups very similar there's two people um, but while he's reaching out they're more entwined here she's on the opposite side than he than him there's a goose in this image they're in front of a door they're outside with this image so again looking at the the difference the interesting thing is when I talked about the two people there's two people here and two people here. So then if we go up to the message here, the um, conscious goal, instead of the magician, we have the witch. Right? Instead of the magician, we have the witch. She still has one hand up and one hand down, although the hands are different. He has a wand, she has the wand here. What is she holding in that and I'm not even sure but she has something in her hand here um, still has a table with all the tools she's wearing a cord there's a crow or a raven she's in a circle 
but again there's one person and even though her hand isn't pointing up we see that her her hat the cone of power is pointing up to manifest it down if you're familiar what the cone of power is so very similar there which brings us down here to this card number four card the unknown influence being the lovers card and here we have the lady and the lord so in this one they're not touching this one they're holding hands this still would go into the same sort of two people two people two people the theme that's being um repeated the past here it was the seven of chalices i was seven of cups seven of chalices very similar with cups although this one you can see things in it these cups you can't really see what's being held in it but still a person interesting this is just a shadow this is she's facing us there's fairies and a um butterfly which gives a different meaning and then the next card in this spread was the knight of cups which is the knight of chalices which is very similar two people both have a person driving out although he has some sort of magic circle back there but still even if we had this flipped again it still shows him either leaving or coming from my perspective and how i would read it and then we're here with these side cards this one is very different so this one has a different de definitely has a different image here to look at where this creates sort of a ladder there is no ladder here the athames or the swords are above the window. So when I'm looking at this card, I would wonder if it's upright, it almost looks like if she were to go through the window, they could, the swords could fall down on her. Whereas if it was upside down, she could probably escape without these falling down. She just have to make sure she doesn't, you know, catch anything on it when she climbs through the window. Where this one is, I would say, is he going to climb the ladder or is he falling down the ladder do you know what i mean so that's what i would look at for that now when i'm looking at this the five of chalices this is very similar actually let me do it this way so we don't get confused very similar with the imagery to read um the chalices here are in her basket where they're all on the ground here there's one on the ground there. She's holding one or spilling one out here where he's not holding any. So that might be a little different for a um, interpretation there. When we're looking to the last two cards, the uh, hopes and fears and the final outcome or the outcome of the reading, These cards are rather similar. This one doesn't have the Kabbalah Tree of Life in it. <coughs> Excuse me. Though there's still the pentacles, there's still the family image here. And the tower, the wild hunt. Um, if you know about the mythology around the wild hunt, this may give you a deeper understanding or a deeper meaning for you to use. But if not, and you're just looking at the images, very similar this has lightning striking and a crown coming off this is light illuminating from inside and imploding almost this has people falling out of the tower this has the the you know odin's um soldiers as a rooster falling so there's still great images um with the tower card so overall you want to look at the theme here of the cards i would definitely read it the same way but this is just to sort of give you an idea how different cards with different images although it's still based in a rider weight 
symbology still would give you different relations to each of the cards. So now I'm going to show you how I've modified this and show you how I, what I do with the Celtic cross. Okay, so this is, oops, you can't see it, hold on. This is the, uh, the, the Celtic cross, I, I believe this is the way it was set up. I'm, I'm sort of, whoops, I sort of shifted the cards so I'm not even positive that this is the way it's supposed to go, but um, I believe this is the way that the cards were set up. So what I want to do is I want to go from here and go to the modified, how I modified it. So what I did is, number one, when I was doing readings, I found that the past card really wasn't helpful. People wanted to know what was happening with them now and how could they change what is happening now to make what they want in the future happen. So what I did is I got rid of this card, which is the third card. You place this card, this card, actually you do one, two, three, four, five. So I got rid of this card. So this card I no longer use in my spread. What I do is I place one, two, and then before I place either of these, I bring a third card in. And the third card is the influences. So remember, we talked about the unknown influences. <coughs> Excuse me, the unknown influence in this card, in this spread, is this card. So now instead of going one, two, three, four, I do one, two, three. So the influences in my spread go here in my modified Celtic cross. So the first one is the querent, the second one is still the obstacles, but now this is the third one. This is the influence that affects what's going on here. That's why it overlaps a little bit. This overlaps not only my querent, but their obstacles. From there, I then place my fifth card, um, I'm sorry, I place a fourth card. The fourth card is the foundation. The fourth card would be what is going on in the person's life right now that creates the foundation. It could be their beliefs about themselves, it could be the beliefs about the situation, it could be just their beliefs, their spiritual beliefs in general, their beliefs about the world we live in, that's the foundation that they spring from when they're addressing themselves and their situation that they want to manifest. Now, the next card I place, we called it the conscious goal of the querent in the other spread. Instead of being the conscious goal, I say that this is message from spirit. So this is something new. And because I am a witch and I channel this energy of divination, I say that this is what those angels or spirit guides or ancestors, gods, whatever it is my querent believes in, this is the message that they're meant to take. And if they don't remember anything else about the reading that they're doing with me, this is the card that they want to remember. This is guidance for them. This is their even, even perhaps themselves telling them what they need to know right now about this reading, about this situation they find themselves in. So this becomes message from spirit. Now, when we're looking at this next card, I keep this as the next, their future. I say this is their immediate future. And I say generally within the next three months, this is what's happening. So it gives them a, a peek of what looks like is in store for them because of what they're doing, what they're believing, what they're thinking. This is probably, you know, their future, same as the regular Celtic cross. Now this is where my modification, the biggest modification I've made, I do not use these four cards. I do keep the last one, the outcome, 
but I don't use the hopes and fears. I don't use other, percep other people's perceptions and I don't use their attitude. So I've gotten rid of three of these cards and I've replaced this card to be this one. I say this is what's most important, their outcome. Now, I generally at this point like to get a little more information. I like to use my cards a little more. So what I've done is I've added some cards that I call clarifying cards. Now, you could do the reading just like this, just using these cards. But like I said, I like to get a little more information from the cards. So I put clarifying cards down. So as it stands, I would put this card first, my querent, their obstacle or, or blockage, the influence of this here. Then I put this card, their foundation, this card, message from spirit, their future, like within the next three months, and their final outcome, the final outcome of the situation. <clears throat> Excuse me. Then I go and I put the next two cards, which would be a clarifying card here for their foundation. So I put two cards here, which would give me insight into what's going on in their foundation. So I would read this card with two clarifying cards to give me a better picture of what's going on. Then I also put two clarifying cards for their future as well. So I put two clarifying cards here, I mean not their future, message from spirit, what spirit wants them to know. So I clarify that a little bit to get a better understanding. And then for their three month future, their immediate future, I put two clarifying cards here as well. And for their final outcome, I would put two clarifying cards as well. And that's how I modify the traditional Celtic cross. And again, you read it and interpret it the same way as you did the others. You look at the pictures within the picture. You look at, remember the easiest one, I'm going to give you the example over here, um, for the six month. I mean, for the, the future, the three month and the six month. And that's what I say. This will generally manifest within three months and this would generally manifest within six months. If you make no changes, if you just keep going along, making the same way, taking the same decisions, it's what most likely will happen. Again, you, you don't want to say you guarantee this is going to happen, but because we're reading the probabilities. As, as you read and do divination, you are tapping into the interconnectedness of everything that there is and the, the patterns that people have set in their lives. And if you build up a momentum with one path, like you're running down a hill, the, the, the faster you're going and, and the more focused you are on getting at the bottom of the hill, you build up the energy behind your beliefs and your actions and you're going and you're going. It'd be very difficult for you to stop, but not impossible. So that's what we're looking at. We're sort of mapping out a possible route that someone would take, the most probable route in the next you know, three to six months. So if I'm looking at this, remember we have this uh, knight, you know, moving forward, moving away from our querent. And then we want to look at the two clarifying cards and how they relate. So is he moving towards the six month? He is like moving away from the querent, moving towards the future. And then he has, we have an image and an image and an image. So we have three human figures here, uh, one in each. And then I look at, you know, she is bound and has all these swords around her. This one is stepping on pentacles, holding pentacles, keeping them close, clutched to him, encircling him. I mean, what is this telling us? What do we see here? If this is the main issue and these are clarifying or more characteristics of what's going on. And we do the same with the, the six month, the tower card, 
one figure here, one figure here. We have two figures here. They sort of look like they're falling, I mean, down here. Um, the tower is pointing down here. You know, the earth is above, the, the sky is below now. What does that mean? He is turning away from us, again, walking this way. This figure is also walking this way. I mean, all these three figures that are in movement are moving in a linear pattern towards the future, if that's what we see as the future. What does this mean? How does this relate to everything? That's how I do this. That's how I look at it. I'm not going to show you the cards with the with the um, green witch because it's, it's, you know, very similar, different images. The idea is to look at the picture within the picture and how it relates to each each picture throughout the whole reading and what's the main thing main theme and the main image perhaps even i look at the numbers you know of the cards is there a repetitive number um we had the twos we made it reference to two two and even though it's it's a six there's still two images here there's an eight here there's a ten there's a seven there's a four <clears throat> a four here as well so you might want to look at the two fours here there is a three here and you want to look at the numbers of the major arcana there's a 10 here there's a 10 here so how do they relate looking at the the interconnectedness of the cards in the layout is something you want to do as well so in the next video, I'll go over another spread and how I interpret it and give you some pointers on that as well. Hopefully this has been enjoyable and you've learned something. Until next time, I love you. If you enjoyed this video, please share it with your friends on Facebook, Twitter, Instagram, or any other social media platform. Don't forget to subscribe to my channel. This way you won't miss any of my newly uploaded videos. Be sure to connect with me on Facebook through my Cricket Song fan page or my Lunar Wisdom business page. And you can always find me on my website at www.lunarwisdom.net.